Hey Pixies, today we're doing a Builder Gel in a Bottle video. I am using Amelie. I don't know if that's how you say it, so forgive me if I said it wrong. I got it on Amazon for pretty cheap, and I have done eight of my fingers so far. I am doing extensions on all of my fingers. So it took me quite a while to do an extension on every finger, so I thought I'd just film two of the fingers for you. I'm using my the Builder Gel, my Model 1's base coat, and my Model 1's top coat, and then the nail forms, which I also got off of Amazon. So I'll link everything below for you. The Builder Gel in a bottle looks different than this one because I got this one about seven or so months ago, and they changed the way it looks a little bit. But I'm going to first start out by taking my nail form and I pop out that centerpiece, put it on the back for a little bit more sturdiness. You don't have to do that, but I just do it. It just creates a little bit more sturdiness to the form. And then you rip open the perforated part at the end and slide it under your nail as far as you can. And then I kind of lightly push up on it. You wanna make sure that your nail and the nail form are flush so that you don't have a gap there. If there's a gap, then the product will go under your nail, so you don't really want that. So make sure it's nice and flush. And then I'm just lightly pushing back my cuticles and wiping off my finger with an alcohol prep pad. Then I'm going to take my Builder Gel and I'm doing a nice thin layer to the entire nail. So I just do a nice thin layer and I do pull the product away from my cuticle and sidewall areas. I don't wanna create any bulkiness there because the dip powder tends to create some bulkiness, especially certain dip powders over others. So I try to make that as thin as I can. And once I have that done, I take a bead of the Builder Gel and apply it to the tip. Now, if you weren't doing extensions, you wouldn't even need the nail forms or anything. You would just apply the Builder Gel to your natural nail. But since I'm extending them so that they're longer, then I have that nail form on and I make the product longer and wider than what I would want it to be for my nail. That way I can file it down to the right shape and size that I want. Once I have a little bit of a bead there on the nail form and I have it all leveled out, I hold my finger upside down for about 20 seconds or so to level it because gel is self-leveling and then I cure it for 30 seconds. So I'm just back here after curing for 30 seconds for the first layer. The second layer, I do the same thing. I apply a very thin coat to the entire nail, pull it away from my sidewalls and my cuticle area, and then I take a little bit extra product and I apply that to the extended part. So the part that I applied past my nail, and I just make a nice little layer there. And once I have that done, I'll hold my finger upside down again for about 20 seconds or so, and that will help create a natural apex and level the gel out for you, so it does a good bit of the work for you. And then I cure that again for 30 seconds, and I am going to take off the nail form. And once I, be very careful taking off the nail form because you don't wanna rip your extension, especially if you have a really long one. So once I have the nail form off, I am applying that Builder Gel one more time to the entire nail, including the extended part that I, that I created. So once I have a thin layer on that entire nail, I then again hold it upside down, and this time I cure it for 60 seconds. So once I have this layer on, this is our third layer, I'll cure that for 60 seconds, and then we will be done with that nail. So I'm going to go ahead and just make sure, I like to run my finger along the edge to make sure there's no builder gel on my actual skin. And like I said, it's self-leveling, so I hold it upside down and then we cured it and I'm going to take an alcohol prep pad and just wipe off that tacky layer because this builder gel does leave a tacky layer so I just take that alcohol prep pad and wipe it off so it's nice and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and apply my nail form to my pinky finger so I just put that underneath and made it nice and flush and I'm going to take, that was a little mini earthquake, my cat jumped up on the table that I have my tripod on so yeah, they're always really interested in what I'm doing when I'm doing my nails. So I'm just applying that nice layer to the entire nail, pulling any excess product away from my cuticle and sidewall, and then extending it slightly. Holding my finger upside down for it to self-level a little bit, and hopefully get rid of any little bumps that might be there. And once I have that done, I'll cure it for 30 seconds, and now I'm back to do the next layer. So I just apply that to the entire nail again. Now. 
This is the first time I have done an extension on each finger. I have used this product multiple times in the past just on my natural nails to create some more durability with it because I use peel base and my, nail, my natural nails are very thin. So when my nail pops off, then my natural nail could break because they're thin anyway. So I've used it in the past just for that. I've used it to extend a broken nail. I've used this product a good bit and I really like it. I don't have any complaints. It's not perfect, but it's my application. And possibly I think I'm getting little air bubbles in the part that I extended, but it really doesn't bother me. I feel like it's because of the brush. The brush is kind of big, but I feel like that's kind of what's creating the air bubbles possibly, not sure. But like I said, that really doesn't bother me because I usually have dip powder on top of it. So I don't see the air bubbles. I'm not just walking around with my builder gel nails on a typical basis. So once I have my nails fully cured, I go ahead and take my fi hand file and I start filing. I file it the shape and size that I want. And then I file the top as well to get rid of any little bumps or unevenness. You can use an e-file. I used an e-file on some of my nails on the other hand, but I, I don't know. I just feel like I have more control whenever I use a hand file versus an e-file. So I'm just more comfortable using the hand files. So I'm just, like I said, I'm smoothing out the top, making sure there's no bumps, making the sides as wide as I want them, the top as long as I want it. And once I have that done, I'll let you watch me finish that up and I'll be back. Once you're done buffing and filing, I'm just cleaning off that filing dust with an alcohol prep pad and I'm going to apply my Model One's gel base coat, a nice thin layer to each of the nails and cure that for 30 seconds. Once I do that, I will apply my Model One's gel top coat to both of the nails in a nice thin layer, hold my finger upside down for about 15-20 seconds and cure it for 60 seconds. So if you're in the market for a beginner friendly builder gel to see if it's something you like, I would definitely recommend this. It's inexpensive and it'll give you an idea if builder gel is something that you're even interested in continuing to use. So I would highly recommend this one. I was a beginner. I had never used builder gel before and I thought it was pretty easy to use. So I am going to just clean up each of the nails now and I'll show you my extensions here. While I do that, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more content, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss any videos. If you have any questions or video suggestions, you can leave a comment below or DM me on Instagram at DippingPixie. I'd love to see you over there as well. And that is it for this one, guys, and I will see you in the next one.